What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS and iPadOS 17.6 to the general public after over a month of beta testing. So in this video, we're going to talk about what's new in this update, the performance, the battery life, and if this will be the final iOS 17 update or not. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 17.6? And the first thing has to do with the TV application and sports. So we now have a new catch up feature for live sports in the TV application, and this was introduced for MLS Season Pass. So if you do have the MLS Season Pass, you can now use the Catch Up feature, which means that when you join a live stream, a live game that's in progress, you can now catch up on the action by watching a series of AI-generated clips of highlights that have already happened during the game. So this is really cool, and this is something that's existed on other services before, but it's nice to see this come to the TV application, and this is also a available on tvOS and iPadOS as well. Also, if you go into one of the games here in the TV application, you'll notice that we now have the share button up in the top left-hand corner right here, whereas before you had to tap on the three dots and the share button was down there. So just a minor change to the now playing view. In the Apple News application, we now have the ability to schedule live activities. So you can now schedule a live activity so you don't have to wait for a game to start or for instance, the election to start to get those live activities in the dynamic island. There's a small privacy update in the shortcuts application. So the first time you run a shortcut with one of these two actions, get contents of web page or get contents of URL, you'll see that we have this new wording right here. So before in 17.5.1, it just said allow, but now in 17.6, we have a sentence underneath of that that says this might allow this shortcut to share content with the website. So that's just a new little addition there in shortcuts. In the settings application, if we go into our privacy and security section and then into location services and then go down to where we see Siri before in 17.5.1, that said Siri and dictation. But now in 17.6, it just says Siri. If you have an Apple Pencil Pro, iOS and iPadOS 17.6 introduces lost mode for the Apple Pencil Pro. So before on the 17.5 updates, the Apple Pencil Pro was not fully supported and you could not enter into lost mode, but now with iOS and iPadOS 17.6, as you can see, you can find it nearby and you could also now mark it as lost. In the messages application, if somebody messages you that is unknown, if they're not in your contacts list before in 17.5.1, even if they were international, it would just say the sender is not in your contacts list. But now with 17.6, if that user is international, it will now say that it's from an unknown international sender. So a little bit more specific with the wording there and messages. If you have the Beats pill that is now supported with iOS 17.6 and there's also now a matching Beats icon in the control center when you're connected to that Beats pill. In the photos application, if you go into the recently deleted folder and you go to permanently delete one of your photos, there's now a new sentence at the end that says this action can't be undone before it did not say that. If you have an Apple card and you're in the wallet application and you notice that your Apple card account has been suspended before you would never know why until you called customer support. But now starting with iOS 17.6, you get an alert that tells you why your account was suspended. For instance, if you declared bankruptcy, it will now show that as an alert. And there's also a few other small wording changes throughout iOS 17.6. For instance, the text has changed when you're adding a legacy contact and a few other small changes, but nothing really noteworthy. Now, as far as bug fixes go, if we take a look at the release notes here, there's really not a lot going on in the release notes whatsoever. Really, the only thing noteworthy here is this one related to audio. So it says some Bluetooth headphones might not be usable as an audio output route with certain AV audio session configurations. And you can see a few other notes there as well, but nothing too interesting. Now, I will say that the messages bug appears to be fixed here with 17.6. So a lot of people had issues with messages either being slow to send or just not sending the first time the message would fail. So it seems like 17.6 might have fixed that bug from 17.5. Also, if you're having cell connectivity issues, those could also be resolved with this update. So we did get a modem firmware update for certain devices. So you might see an improvement in cell connectivity if you did have issues beforehand. Now, as far as security updates go, iOS 17.6 contains several important bug fixes and security patches. Now, fortunately, 
None of these were being actively exploited. However, there are a lot of bugs that have been patched here, and some of these seem pretty serious. So there are several kernel bugs, image IO bugs. There is a bug here that's really interesting related to the phone, where it says a lock screen issue was addressed because an attacker with physical access may be able to use Siri to access sensitive user data. There was also one where photos in the hidden photos album may be viewed without authentication. There were multiple issues with shortcuts where a shortcut may be able to use sensitive data with certain actions without prompting the user. And there were some with Siri here. And then of course, as always, we have multiple WebKit bugs that were patched as well. So as I always say, even if the update seems minor, it's usually always worth it to go ahead and update just to ensure that your device is as secure as possible. And then when it comes to the performance, performance overall is gonna feel about the same as 17.5 and 17.5.1. I would not really expect any type of change in performance performance aside from just some bug fixes. But as far as overall raw performance, don't expect any type of major jump going from 17.5 or 17.5.1 to 17.6. Now I did go ahead and run a Geekbench 6 test and we scored a 24-21 on the single core and a 60-63 on the multi-core here on my 13 Pro Max. So pretty similar results to what we saw in the previous updates. And then when it comes to battery life, battery life is going to be in the same boat. I would not really expect any type of change to the battery life here with iOS 17.6. I have been using the RC, which is technically the final release for over a week now, and battery life has been fine for me. I've really not been able to tell a difference from 17.5.1, at least on this device. So don't expect any major changes there. We likely will not see any changes to performance or battery life until iOS 18, which they'll probably be worse at the beginning with iOS 18, but it will get a little bit better as time goes on. But at this point, we're pretty much reaching the end of the iOS 17 release cycle. So now should you update to iOS 17.6 or should you just wait for iOS 18? And I would say at this point in the release cycle, there's really no downside. I wouldn't really worry too much about having issues when updating. Usually once we get this late into the cycle, they're not really going to run into any major issues. So I don't really see any reason not to update to iOS 17.6 unless you're just really worried about things going wrong and you're having a perfect experience on the version that you're currently currently on. But let's go ahead and talk about what to expect next, because we are getting pretty close to iOS 18, which is coming in September. So, you know, in the month of August, we could see a release of a 17.6.1. And I do think that iOS 17.7 is also possible, but iOS 17.7 could be the final, you know, single point update for iOS 17. I think we're going to see a lot of double point updates, for instance, 17.6.1, 17.6.2 versions like that that are mainly just going to be security patches and minor bug fixes. But we should be seeing iOS 18 at some point in mid-September. I would say somewhere around September 16th is when we can expect to see iOS 18. So if you're waiting for that, that is when I would expect it. So that is iOS 17.6, a relatively minor update as expected since all the big features and changes are being saved for iOS 18 in September. But nonetheless, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. Also be sure to subscribe for more iOS 18 and some more small iOS 17 videos in the future. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.